a few weeks ago, I was having lunch on the outside patio of an establishment. About 15 minutes into my lunch, a gentleman walked up to me and uh, extended himself over the rail and asked if I had any money I could spare. And so I pulled out a few dollars. I think I had $6 cash on me. And something in me, you know, struck me to inquire about this brother's situation because he looked fairly young. So I asked the brother, I said, how old are you? And he said, I'm 32. And when he said that, I was like, wow, man, just a young man, a young man out here asking for money and looks to be homeless and looks to have gotten the bad end of a fight. He had a, a huge knot on his forehead. So I asked the brother, you know, how, how did you get in this situation? And he said two words. He said, I'm stuck. And I had never heard anyone say that before. So I had him repeat himself. I said, what'd you say? He said, I'm stuck. I said, what do you mean by that? And he said, my mom had a stroke a few months ago, and ever since then, I've been stuck. I can't get out of this rut. Nothing's working out for me. Now, if you know me, I'm very direct. You know, some people call it abrasive, but if I want to know something, I'll ask. And, you know, I'll try to be diplomatic and respectful in my delivery but I will ask whatever I want to know. And so I asked the brother, are you on any drugs? Do you do drugs? And he said, no, I don't do drugs. Uh, he said, I don't do hard drugs. He said, I do smoke weed, but I don't, I don't do hard drugs. And I don't drink. I said, now, do you want to work? He said, I do. I said, well, you know, I know people that can now. Uh, get you a position, you know, doing some warehouse work to start out. I said, do you have ID? He said, no, I don't have ID. And right after he said, no, I don't have ID, he put his head down and he walked away. And uh, in my mind, I'm thinking, He's probably thinking, man, that's a whole different challenge for me to get my ID. You know, not only, you know, am I homeless? Uh, I don't have money. I'm not here asking God, strangers for money. But, you know, I want to work, but I don't have ID. Now, that may seem like a, a simple task for many of you, but. You know, I can only speculate, you know, about that man's situation. If, you know, me mentioning his ID caused him to put his head down and walk away. He may have warrants. He may not have a birth certificate or uh, a social security card to get his ID. You know, I don't know. But I will say there are steps to get your mind out of being stuck. Let's dive into it. Get your glasses up. Get your glasses up. A toast to the men. Number one way of getting your mind out of that stuck place is you must let go of the past. You have to let go of the past. You have to focus on now. You have to. The past is the past and you got to let it go. Now, I wouldn't say forget about the past. I think it needs to be tucked away though and 
You should only reflect on the past to motivate you. But you should not live in the past. And there's two sides of that. From a, you shouldn't live on negative things in the past, and you shouldn't live on positive things in the past. Live on. Now, you can reflect on the positive things to get you out of a rut, to motivate you, to remind you that you've been here before, you've conquered uh, this task before, you've overcome the odds and beat the odds before, so it should only be used to, to motivate, and that's sparing you. But anything that's happened that was bad to you in your past, uh, you got to let it go. You got to release that. You can't let those things hold you captive. Anything that's happened to you in the past that's positive, you can't live on that. You got to live on now. There's some brothers, man, that still live on what they did in the past, like the money they made in the past, the touchdowns they scored in the past, the dunks, you know. They did in the past. The girls they got in the past. Is some guy still living in the past? Oh, negativity and positive accolades. But all those things, whether it's from positive perspective or negative perspective, they will make you lazy and they will make you depressed. So you got to release those things and live in the now. You have to live in the now. Take it day by day. Actually, you don't own a day. I only own this moment. Once this moment is gone, I don't own it, anything. So, you know, it's not promised that I'm going to be here in the next five seconds. That's not promised. I just own, like, this moment, this split second. That's it. Live in the now. Now, that brother uh, being in a rut or uh, having his mind stuck, as this his mind is stuck, not his body, it's his mind. Uh, it has to be more to it than his mom having a stroke. You know, people have strokes every day. I don't want to seem insensitive. But let me tell you, man, if uh, you're 32 years old and your mom having a stroke has uh, sent you in a position of stuckness, put you in a rut to where, you know, you can't work and you're asking people for money, you have bigger issues going on. And that relationship with your mom before the stroke was not healthy. Uh, it was not healthy. That was a that was a toxic, unhealthy relationship. You know, one time, this was years ago, someone had died uh close to the family. I was a young man, like my kids were young. I'm talking about young, like two, three, four, something like that. Someone died. And uh I remember talking to my mom about it, <clears throat> and I was like, man, I I don't know, you know what would happen, how I could handle it if you was to die. Like, I don't know how I could handle it. She said, you'll be all right. And this is going into the second step to get your mind unstuck. And she said, you'll be all right. And uh, so why do you say that? I'm thinking she's implying that I don't love her. She said, as soon as one of your babies say, Daddy, I'm hungry. Daddy, I want a juice. Daddy, I want to go outside. You know, snap out of it and start doing daddy stuff. Now, she wasn't saying I wouldn't mourn. I wouldn't be sad. But life goes on. And what she was saying on a deeper level is like, you have purpose. You have something to live for. My kids I have responsibilities. I'm held accountable. I have kids. I have young kids at that time. So I cannot feed them because I'm mourning. 
cannot get them something to drink because I'm mourning. I cannot, you know, take them outside to play because I'm mourning. I cannot go to work and not provide because I'm mourning with my mom. I have purpose. That's the second thing to get unstuck. Discover your purpose. Many people struggle struggle with this, discovering their purpose. Um, and I know how that can happen. You know, we, we get caught in life, moving too fast, doing things out of order. And now we're just trying to survive, struggling to strive. But this is your purpose, in my opinion. Your purpose is driven through your gift and your talent. Your gift and your talent is not your purpose. Your purpose is the light that gift or talent gives you and others. That's what the purpose is. You know, the, the, the gift or the talent is just a vehicle. Right? But it's not the destination. It's not the mission. It's not the joy. It's not the light. So how do you discover your gift and talent, man? In my opinion, it's anything that you love to do that brings joy to you, that you would do for free. It brings joy to you, and it brings joy to others. It actually comes easy to you. Now, the mission, pursuit of the purpose, is going to have its challenges. But the gift and the talent itself comes easy to you. It's natural. And it shines a light on you and gives other people joy too. That's your gift of talent. Now, your perspective or your intent, your spirit of why you're doing it and what you want to accomplish, that's going to be the light. That's going to be your purpose, bringing joy and enlightenment to yourself and to others. There you go. Third thing to unstuck or get your mind out of an unstuck position. Get busy. Get busy. I got a friend who uh, who really goes through uh, a depression in the month of November. Not only is this her favorite month, but uh, her birthday is in this month. And her father also died in this month. And her mother also died in this month. And so when this month hits, man, she, she, she goes in a rut. But what she does to combat that, she gets busy. She stays busy. She uh, does charity work. She helps others. You know, so what I would suggest to you, Do a project. I'm talking about not just any project, a project that requires you to be intense, to focus, to be disciplined. I'm talking about you might want to paint your bathroom. You might want to build a deck, a patio, uh, add a room, I don't know, knock down a wall, extend, extend a room. You know, something that's going to require you to focus. That's going to get you out of that rut. Yeah. Um, next thing, and, and I kind of mentioned this before or, or touched on it. Do things in steps. Don't look at the big picture. Don't look at the mountain you have to climb. Don't look at all the steps. Just deal with one step at a time. You know, I don't know if that gentleman, that young man had warrants or didn't have his birth certificate or his social security card and, and couldn't get his license or his ID. But let's say that's the case. Let's say all three were factors. Warrants, no birth certificate, no, no, uh, no social security card. Let's say he has warrants. Okay, you, you don't have money to pay the warrants. You're out here homeless. Uh, you're asking people for money. 
Hey man, go turn yourself in. Sit it out. You're gonna get three hots in the cot. Sit it out. Sit out the tickets, man. Go turn yourself in and sit out the tickets. There you go. That alleviates, that wipes out the warrants. Okay? Next thing, you still don't have any money with us they release you. What you do, you ask people, instead of asking people for money, you ask, can you do something for money? Legal, of course, but you do an exchange. You always want to do an exchange of energy, always. So, you know, I've never looked down on people asking because they wipe my, my windows, my windshields, or uh, could they pump my gas? That's an exchange. That means they want to, want to exchange energy. They don't want me to just give them something. You know, I know people may look down on these people uh, that they do those things, but I respect that they're not just asking for money. They are willing to exchange energy. I'll wipe your windshields, I'll wash your car, I'll pump your gas in exchange for money. I respect it, you know? Uh, I respect exchange of energy. So when you do that, people will give you more. You know, uh, when you're just asking for money, they may deny you, they may give you something. I gave them something. Uh, but perhaps if he had offered, I don't know, to do anything, man, I probably would have went to the ATM and got more money. But I respect exchange of energy. So now you're stacking up a few dollars. Go get your social security card. Go get your birth certificate. You know, you catch the bus or whatever the case may be. Then you can get your ID. Then you can get employment. Hey, you've been living on the street. You work, live on the street, do what you got to do. Then you work your way up. You get a motel room. You know, the steps, man. The steps, but you can get, you can do it. You know, there's somebody listening to this that's in that situation probably. Uh, don't look at the big picture, man. Step by step. Step by step, and you can knock it out. When you're looking towards the future and you're looking at this huge mountain you have to climb, you're going to get depressed. You're going to get anxiety. You're going to feel defeated. So tackle it step by step. Lastly, understand and know that this shall pass. Understand that, man, this is just a chapter, a page or a chapter, or a stage, phase in my life. This is the past. I'm not going to be here forever. This is going to pass. If you don't know and truly know that this will pass, you will get stuck. You will get stuck. And that goes along with, I guess this is a bonus step, believing in yourself. Knowing this will pass, you have to believe in yourself. You can't look towards anyone to believe in you. You have to believe in yourself. I'm telling you, man, you, you, uh, you can't look for family to believe in you. You can't look for friends. You can't. You have to fight and really believe in yourself. You got to fight those thoughts, those negative thoughts, those dark thoughts in your head. And you may have to talk to yourself. You may have to talk to those, that negative side of you with assertiveness and, and say, hey, be quiet, shut up. I am worthy. I will get out of this. This is just a phase. But you have to believe in yourself. That's the most important thing, man. Your perspective your outlook, how you think and feel about yourself. Hey, just a few steps to get that mind unstuck. Let me know what you guys think, man. From me to you as usual. Peace.